In this video, we will talk about what you should do and what to expect in the IELTS speaking exam. We will also look at how you can introduce yourself to the examiner. So let's begin. Hi there, this is Mr. Brick from IELTS Mr. Brick and on this channel we cover everything IELTS related. That includes tips, tricks and tutorials. So if this is something that you're interested in, consider subscribing. Now I know that most people might get extremely nervous when they've booked the IELTS speaking exam, especially when you know that your speaking exam is only one or two days away. So in this video, I will tell you exactly what to do what to expect and more importantly how to speak to the examiner so i've broken this video down into three stages you can skip to any stage if you don't want to watch the other two stages however if you're new to this my advice would be to watch the whole video till the end so the three parts are what to expect before you even see the examiner what to do when you actually meet the examiner and finally what to expect when your speaking exam officially starts so let's jump straight into part one what to expect before meeting the examiner so first of all you will be waiting in the corridor or in the hallway or any other type of waiting room then the examiner will call your name out and invite you to the exam room where your IELTS exam will take place now once you enter the room you might be nervous, that is completely fine. It's completely normal and the examiner will already be aware of this. So don't worry about that. Now, once you enter the room, it is important that you greet the examiner. So you can say something like, hi, or hello. You do not need to say anything else. There's no need to say, oh, hey, how is it going? Oh, I'm so tired, it's very hot out there. Don't go over the top don't be too informal and also don't be too formal you don't need to say good afternoon sir just keep it simple a simple hi or hello is absolutely fine now the next stage is really interesting and that's because the examiner may or may not speak to you before the exam so some examiners might ask you um, basic questions or they refer to as dead questions these are questions that just break the ice. So they might ask you, oh, did you find this building easily or was it difficult? They might ask you basic questions like that. Some examiners might even ask you, oh, so why do you want to take the IELTS exam? But whatever your answer is, it won't go towards your final mark. They're just building up conversation and they're just trying to warm you up. Now, once you explain to the examiner, oh, I want to take the IELTS exam because I want to study in the UK. They might ask you a few questions as a follow-up, such as, oh, so what do you want to study? And here you just need to be natural. So just say, oh, well, I thought about studying medicine or just give any other type of response. Now, on the other hand, there might be some examiners who just completely avoid this whole step and just say to you, your exam has officially started. So they might just completely get rid of that section. You don't need to think that, oh, this examiner is a bit more strict. So therefore, he or she will mark my answers with a bit more harshness, okay? It just depends on their personality. It could also depend on whether they are running out of time or not because they might have already had a few IELTS speaking exams before and now they've only got 20 minutes to complete one or two exams. So you don't need to worry about this section too much. This area is just for me to let you know of what to expect. Now let's go on to the third part and this is where the exam actually begins. So what you will see is that the examiner will have a tape recorder and once the examiner clicks the button, okay, he or she will say, this speaking exam has officially started. At that moment, and only at that moment, will the exam officially start. So anything before then, you don't need to worry about too much. Now here, the first question that the examiner will ask you is, what is your name? And you can just respond by reading out your name as it appears on your passport or any other type of ID. Then the examiner will ask you, what should I call you? Now again, here you just want to keep your response simple. Just tell them your name that you would want the examiner to call you. In most cases, it will be the same name as it appears on your ID card. So for example, if your name is 
Ilyas. You might just tell the examiner, well, you can call me Ilyas. Or if you have a long name, such as Victoria, you can tell the examiner, well, you can just call me Vicky. Or you can call me Becky. What you don't want to do is go a bit overboard and just say, oh, well, you can call me the gym hero. Okay, obviously you're not going to do that, but I'm just letting you know in advance to just keep things simple. Now, once they have asked you for your name and what they can call you, they will then ask you to see proof of ID. So they might ask you, can I see your passport or any other type of ID, depending on which country you're taking the exam in. And at this stage, you will just give them your ID again, just say, here you go, keep it simple. Then they will ask you, where are you from? Here you can give a little bit of description. So you can say, well, I'm from Dhaka, which is the capital of Bangladesh. Or I'm from Manchester, which is on the north side of the UK. You can also just keep it even more simple and just say, I'm from Kerala. Or you might want to say, and a lot of people might fit into this category, and that is, you might want to say, well, I'm originally from Lahore, but I grew up in Islamabad. Now, these type of questions I refer to as warm-up questions. These are the type of questions that are similar to when you go to the gym and you're just stretching your muscles before you actually start working out. You're just warming yourself up. Now, just on a side note before I do forget, this most likely will not happen at the start of your IELTS speaking exam, but it's very important. That's why I'm mentioning it now. There might be a chance where your IELTS examiner actually interrupts you. This is usually, again, towards the end of the exam if it happens, and that's usually if you go over your time limit or if they just want to challenge you. But if the examiner does do this, it's not a bad thing. In fact, it can sometimes be a sign of a good thing because it shows that the examiner is challenging you. But again, this is not important at the start of the exam. And also, please don't forget that if they do do this, it's not a bad thing. Now, let's go back to what we were originally talking about. So by now, the examiner's seen your proof of ID. They know your name. They know where you're from. Then the examiner will say to you, now I'm going to ask you a few questions about a specific topic. The examiner will ask you questions about three different topics in order. So first they will ask you questions about one topic, for example, your hometown. Then they will ask you questions about another topic, such as your family. And then they will pick a third topic. Now these topics, they might be random, but they're not that random. What I mean by that is that the examiner will usually have a selection of topics that they can pick from. So it's not like they're just randomly thinking out of their mind, okay? They will have access to these topics in front of them. And a lot of the times you can find similar topics online. I'm sure you might have already done so by now. Now, an example question that the examiner might ask you might be, where is your home? Now here, you just want to answer the question just like this. At the moment, I'm currently living in Dubai. That's it. That's all you need to do. Part one is not the area where you should be showing off your vocabulary and showing off your lexical resource and you know things of that nature. You just want to answer the questions. You're just warming up at this stage. In fact, if you do try to show off too much and you try to use lengthy words and give paragraphs of sentences, it might even go against you. So again, just keep it simple at this stage. Part two and part three, that's your chance to shine with vocabulary and detailed answers, not part one. Now, I will be releasing a video, I might have already released it by now, where I myself will be answering IELTS speaking part one questions. It's just a video of me answering a bunch of questions. So I will leave that in the description below if you haven't already seen it. You will definitely want to watch that video if you are preparing for your speaking exam. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna present you a question and then I want you to compare my two different answers. Where is your home? Now, my first answer is, well, at the moment I'm living in Dubai. Now let's compare that answer to this answer. I am currently living in Dubai, which has around 3.3 million people in the Emirates, which makes it the most popular Emirates in the country. Now, although the second answer was a bit more detailed, it's a bit too much, especially at the start of an interview or a start of a conversation. So remember, keep things simple in part one. Now that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked this video, then like the video. And also here is a video that you will definitely want to see of me answering questions from part one of the IELTS speaking exam. I will see you on the other side. 
Don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe if you haven't already. Bye-bye.